What is going on everybody, Brad here, and in this video, I wanna talk about subwoofer phase and polarity, and when and why you might wanna adjust those things in your home theater. Let's get started. Recently, I received the SVS PB2000 Pro in for review, and a big thanks and shout out to SVS for sending that subwoofer to me to check out. Now, as I was setting it up and trying to integrate it into my home theater, I figured this would be the perfect time and opportunity to talk about phase and polarity and why you might actually wanna adjust those settings to get the best bass response in your home theater depending on your situation. Now the way I set things up in my room is unique to me and my system, but the principles should apply to everyone. So when I receive a subwoofer for review, I put it in the spot in my room that I know has the best frequency response and doesn't require a lot of effort with EQ and such. But I also try to integrate it with my old SVS PB10 ISD. Now in this situation, it's not ideal because the driver sizes are different and the frequency responses are different, but mixing subwoofers is a situation that I think a lot of people have or will be in at some point. You know, you might not have enough money to drop on two brand new subwoofers. You might be able to buy one and you have to live with what you currently have. So that's why I try to integrate that into my review when I set up the subwoofer. So I use REW or Room EQ Wizard to figure out what phase and polarity should be set at based on the frequency response at my main listening position. And we're gonna go over some measurements and talk about that more in a bit. Now after that, I run Odyssey using the Multi EQ Editor app twice. Once with just the PB2000 Pro with no phase or polarity adjustments at all. And then with both subwoofers on with phase and or polarity tweaked as needed. Now this honestly isn't necessary for pretty much everyone, but I use this for review purposes so I can switch back and forth between the two as needed. So if I wanna listen to the PB2000 Pro just by itself, I can do that. But then if I wanna listen to a soundtrack with both subwoofers on, I can load that calibration file and still retain all of Odyssey's EQ settings for each one. Really makes it convenient. So now I'd like to head over to my home theater so you can see what I got going on. And then we're gonna look at some measurements and talk about them a little more. But first, if you're new to the channel, I post home theater and gaming related content. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already and clicking that bell notification so you'll never miss out when I upload a new video. Also, the Amazon affiliate links in the description below help support the channel when you use them and doesn't cost you a dime. And if you enjoy listening to tech and gaming related podcasts, definitely check out The Fun Waste of Time. It's where myself and a group of friends get together and talk about gaming, movies, home theater, comics, anything that's considered a fun way to waste your day. I'll leave links to that in the description below so you can check it out if you want to. With that said, let's head over to my home theater. And here we are in my home theater. And like I mentioned, I have the SVS PB2000 Pro on the right hand side of the listening area and the PB10 ISD on the left hand side of the listening area. And they're both about equal distance away from my main listening position on the couch there where that blanket is. It's normally not there, but that's beside the point. And real quick, I do have a slightly lower end uh, Denon X2300W receiver and I say slightly lower end because unfortunately it only has Odyssey Multi EQ XT which doesn't allow for individual bass controls for each sub so it literally it has two outputs on it for subwoofers but it sums it into one single subwoofer so I can only adjust the distance overall for both subwoofers and the level as well, not individually, which kind of sucks and does limit the tweakability that I have after calibration and really dialing things in. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump over into REW and see what we got going on there with frequency response. All right, so here we are in Room EQ Wizard and let's kick things off. I measured the PB10 ISD by itself and this is the frequency response that I got calibrated to 75 decibels. That's what I set the level to. And you'll notice it's not that great. And that mainly comes down to the placement. Now, I could have pushed it over towards the sidewall a little further. However, because of the way the subs are distanced from each other at that point, it really kind of messes with the alignment and delay of the subwoofers themselves. And with the receiver I have, I can't adjust for that. So it is what it is. I just have to live with where these are placed right now. And so we see we have some really bad nulls in this area, not really a great position for a single sub. If we turn that off and take a look at the PB2000 Pro, which is on the right hand side, you'll notice instantly we have a much, much better response 
to the PB10 ISD, which is the highlighted one here. Just much, much better. So, you know, we have some little nulls here and there, which is fine. We have these peaks that are easily corrected with Odyssey, and you'll see that in a bit. And we, we have this kind of weird little null here around the crossover point, uh, but nothing too bad. This is a good starting point, and if it was a single sub in this system, I would have no problem just keeping it where it is. It's a, you know, great frequency response here that's easily correctable. Now let's go ahead and flip both on with no adjustments, and wow, not really what we wanted, is it? Uh, not what we expect from dual subs. We actually lost output compared to just having a single sub. If we look at the PB2000 Pro here, the highlighted one, this is our output of a single sub. And if we look at the blue line here, it, yeah, no, this is not what we want. We typically expect uh, at least plus three decibels increase when turning on both, preferably six decibels is what we go for, but sometimes that's not obtainable with the room that we have. So what can we do? Okay, so let's turn that off. Now let's go ahead and flip the phase on the PB10 to 180 degrees and you'll notice pretty instantly compared to the other both turned on in the background, we have much better response in the lower end and then we start to kind of go down and, and dip into here and it's not really that great. We also have these massive uh, nulls here in here that we, we could probably get rid of and this is kind of around the crossover area and this has probably more to do with the front channel speaker than the sub but uh, we can still probably tweak it a little bit and fix it and try to smooth that out. So let's go ahead and flip the phase on both of them just for the heck of it, because uh, you know, we always want to see what options we have and whoa, not great. Uh, compared to just both by default, yeah, we, we got some output, you know, here and that was about it. We got this massive, massive null around uh, 35 hertz, which is where a lot of information is in the lower frequencies. So that's definitely not what we want. So let's go ahead and turn the phase back to zero on both and flip it to 180 on the PB2000 Pro. And here you'll see we actually have a much, much better response overall. We still have this, this null right here that I, you know, I want to try to get rid of. Just flipping the 180, this would be totally fine. We could run Odyssey. It would probably correct for most of this here. This is not correctable, unfortunately. This is just due to my room. I have vaulted ceilings and openings and all that stuff. And no matter where I place those front speakers, this is gonna stay there so can't do anything about that right now but let's go ahead and turn the phase back to zero on the pb2000 pro and flip the polarity which technically should just invert the phase to 180 degrees anyway but that's not always 100 percent the case so check this out if we turn that polarity to negative wow we've completely got rid of that weirdness that was going on right here if we look back at the the both when they're on, it's just kind of more of a smooth line. And this is great because Odyssey will just look at this and try to correct for these. It might do some weird things and I'll show you that in a second. But this is, this was great. This is much preferable to just having it at 180, in my opinion. You know, 180 being we have this, this null right here. And then with negative polarity, we have this. Now we lost a little bit of output right here, but not enough to really be noticeable and easily corrected and Odyssey will take care of that. So let's go ahead and check out what Odyssey did. This is how sometimes Odyssey will get some things a little weird. It corrected for most of this stuff and, and it looks relatively flat, which is what we want. We can always boost it up a little bit later within the receiver, but it did some weirdness here, uh, you know, around that point that we were trying to get rid of. It actually created this massive null. And so what this might actually be is having that polarity at negative. So you know, what I might do is go back and rerun the phase. I haven't tried that yet. I just haven't had the time, unfortunately, uh, before shooting this video. I might try and do that and I'll, you know, report back in the comments what I find. What can we do with the receiver I have that has very limited options to fixing this? Because we can't adjust the phase now. We've already ran Odyssey and that will just mess up the calibration. We'll have to rerun it again. So first thing I did was I measured the right side just to make sure that it wasn't just the left side because sometimes that can happen. And as you see, it's pretty much identical to the, to the left side. Uh, we do have a little bit of a null right here. What I went ahead and did is I, you know what, let me add a couple feet to the subwoofer distance and see what that does. And as you can see, compared to what Odyssey did by itself, it corrected for it. 
and this looks like a much better line. However, if we take a look at what it did to the right side, or our right speaker, wow, um, way worse than this. So this is before the adjustment, and this is adding two feet to the subwoofer distance. And yeah, not really great. So that's definitely not something we want. We don't wanna make other channels work just by adjusting one. And so what can we do? Well, I played around a little more and found that 11.3 was okay, but Honestly, I just, I need, I'm probably gonna leave it at default because whatever I do, I make, you know, the other channel worse just by adjusting those little things. And this is something where uh, having a mini DSP would really come in handy because we could really dial that stuff in and not worry about making things worse because we can really just see, we can keep doing sweeps and stuff to make sure that what we're doing is correct. This is kind of what it is right now. Um, I could choose to run with out Odyssey, but not really a fan of that. Personally, in my in my experience, it might vary. If you wanna check out how to run Odyssey properly, I'll leave a, a little card up here. And you know what, since I recorded this first, before I recorded that talking head part, let me throw it back to my future self. Thanks, future self. So as you can see, based on the measurements, in my situation, reversing the polarity on the PB2000 Pro gave us a better overall frequency response at the main listening position. Unfortunately, because my receiver doesn't have individual controls for each subwoofer, I'm really limited in the tweaks that I can make to correct things, and I end up making things worse by you know, tweaking those things. As you saw, adding that two foot distance adjustment to the subwoofer distance, really made things worse on the right channel, but it alleviated the problems on the left channel. And we really don't wanna make things worse. We wanna you know, find a good middle ground. But unfortunately, in my current setup, I just am not able to do that. Now, if you're in a similar situation as I am and have kind of an older receiver or lower end receiver that only has a single control for your, both of your subwoofers, then you really only have a couple options if you wanna tweak your subwoofers further and optimize the bass and frequency response. You could either just buy a brand new receiver, which as you know is expensive, but you'll need something with Dirac Live or Multi EQ XT32 that has those individual controls for your subwoofers. Now, a cheaper alternative, albeit one that requires a little bit more knowledge and has a steep learning curve, is to buy a Mini DSP 2x4 HD for around $200, and you will need a measurement mic to go along with that. So if you don't have one, something like the U-Mic 1 is another $100, and so you're out about 300 bucks. But that setup will go with you regardless if you upgrade your receiver or subwoofers or both down the line. So I think it's a good investment. Personally, I do think I'm gonna eventually go the mini DSP route, uh, but I'm pretty happy with the current results that I have and I could probably try to find ways to tweak things a little further. But honestly, if you wanna see me try to tackle uh, mini DSP and things like time alignment and all that stuff, then leave me a comment and let me know. You might actually push me over the edge sooner rather than later. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. It lets me know that you appreciate this type of content. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one where I try to run like Tom Cruise in Minority Report.